Hello everyone, all you wonderful people and welcome to the 2025 JavaScript course. So yeah, today I decided to get started with this one as well. So I will be going through all the things and features in the JavaScript language. Uh, small steps at a time and I will be sharing my knowledge with you all and explaining stuff as we go through. And a little little thing to note before we start is that if you have, haven't completed the HTML and CSS courses or if you don't know those languages then this can be challenging. But uh, yeah, I think you might be able to get through. Alright, so what is Java JavaScript? Well, JavaScript is a programming language which is used throughout the internet. It, it usually runs in a modern web browser and yeah, the new features are not supported in the older ones like Internet Explorer or stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so when we create a website, um, when we do that with HTML, the HTML is kind of like the skeleton of the website. Then the CSS is all the colors, layouts and fonts. Then JavaScript is all the uh, interactivity, all the logic, uh, everything basically that's functioning behind the curtain. So if we have a button and I click the button, normally nothing happens, but I gotta write some JavaScript and then then we have a functioning button. Alright, let's get going. I'm gonna go right over here. Let's let's pretend that wasn't there. Alright, I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna name this uh, JavaScript Course 2025. Alright, then Inside of this folder, I'm gonna make a file index.html, then uh, style.css, and I like to use index.js. .js is the extension for JavaScript. So, yeah. This is a JavaScript file. Anyways, you can use other names as well. They don't really matter, but the index is usually the main file. However, that's used more with HTML than it is with JavaScript. Anyways, uh, let's get going. Uh, First of all, I'm going to create the HTML syntax. So you can, in Visual Studio Code, yeah, by the way, make sure to get a code editor. Visual Studio Code is great. That's what I'm using right now. And the link is code.visualstudio.com, uh, I think. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna make the HTML syntax now. I'm gonna type in an exclamation mark and press tab. Alright, so here we go. First, we make a declaration that this is an HTML5 document. We use the English language, we have the head section and then the body section. Alright, uh, let's rename this file. Uh, I'm gonna 
say JavaScript course 2025. All right. So that goes between the title tags. Then we can also link the CSS file into the HTML file. So we need a link tag. Then we need a rel, rel attribute. That means relationship. I'm gonna type in style sheet. So the relationship uh, between these files is that the other is a style sheet. Then href is the location. I'm gonna type in index, uh, not index, but style.css. Make sure to include the file extension. All right, so now we have the CSS file. Then I'm going to need the JavaScript file. So I need a pair of script tags. And inside of this, I'm gonna use the source attribute. And then I'm going to name the file. So index.js. Okay, there we go. Now we have linked those files to this document. So yeah. Um, one more thing before getting, I mean, starting off is the extension. So you can go to extensions. You can search for live server and then get uh, this one or some live server extension or the live preview by Microsoft. I would recommend this one or this one. But you might have other preferences but you should have a live server extension because that allows us to open this file with live server um, I'm gonna cut this text inside of here so it's gonna be a comment and now I got the file open there we go. So, it says up there, JavaScript course 2025. Okay, I did a little realignment of my windows, but there we go. Now we got the file open, and because we got live server, I can type in a heading, for example. Hello and welcome. And when I press Control S, you can see that we now have a heading element on the website. If we weren't using live server, we would have to use the reload button all the time. So yeah, live server is definitely good. The difference between live preview is that this updates all the time, automatically, so I don't even have to press Ctrl S to save. It will update completely automatically. So yeah, that's the difference between live server and live preview. Alright, then let's go ahead and I'm gonna type a paragraph. And this is the first episode of my 2025. I'm gonna need another one. JavaScript course. All right. So there we go. All right. So we got some text now, so we know the HTML works and the live server. Let's go to CSS 
and let's take the body of our document and let's make the font size something like 3em okay maybe 2 is enough there we go and then font family I'm gonna go with Arial backed up by the other two and then let's say that I want a background dash color of gray I'm gonna use HSL uh, 25 all right and then a color of light blue okay there we go so the CSS is working I'm gonna give you an example of some JavaScript so let's create a button for example button and let's add an attribute called ID the ID is gonna be my BTN and show the next uh, episode all right we have the button and then I'm going to uh, go over here and there's gonna be a paragraph actually here we go I'm gonna change it over here so in the next episode we will cover variables okay then I'm gonna take the button I'm gonna use a dot to select my BTN and I'm gonna add some padding uh, it was a hashtag by the way okay a little bit more that's good border radius 10 pixels okay let's set the color to be blue I mean white and background color to be something blue okay There we go, 75%. Okay, that's too much already. That's pretty good. Okay. And then border will be none. And there we go. Uh, cursor. Pointer. Okay. So show the next episode which means by default uh, this one should be hidden I'm gonna add a class so class is gonna be hide okay and then select dot hide and display will be hidden or none there we go now the paragraph is gone from the site so let's go to the JavaScript file I'm gonna increase the font size on the button just a little bit okay so I'm gonna say document I actually call const uh, my btn document get element by ID and the ID is my BTN and then uh, text equals document get element by ID and the ID was hide all right if text dot class list contains uh, 
height then we're gonna remove that so uh, we got to add an event listener oh yeah my btn add event listener click and uh, show hide this is gonna be a function all right then I'm gonna say function show hide and if text style display is strictly equal to none then I'm going to go ahead and uh, make that a block level element and else uh, it's going to be none there we go so that's a simple file so now when I click um okay uh i didn't get this to work immediately so this is a very good example when we can use dev tools if you have your pc in english uh, you can right click then take the last option over here on google chrome and click that will open dev tools then you can go you can go to the console and over here it says uncaught type error cannot read properties of null and then it tells tells me index.js and the line is 9 so yeah the display is right now the problem so yeah basically I wanted to tell you about this console we're gonna be using this a lot anyways I'm gonna change this so if text dot class list contains a class called hide then we will do this text class list remove hide else actually I'm gonna use toggle alright and then these can be removed Okay, what is it saying now? Oh yeah, but I still, I'm, I'm still using the class. Oh my gosh, I better go to bed soon. All right. Anyways, now it works. So when I click, it will hide and show this. In the next episode, we will cover variables. So yeah. And I can click it indefinitely. So yeah, this all over here was just an example of JavaScript. So this is the type of stuff that we can do with that. Okay, so the only problem that I had was I was using a class instead of an ID. So you gotta be really, really... Uh, concentrated when you're doing this you can also select a class by document .query selector, and there's other methods as well but I was using get element by ID which means that the element needs an ID so yeah anyways I hope you were able to learn something new from this one and show the next episode. In the next episode, we'll cover var variables. So yeah, anyways, have yourselves a wonderful day everyone and bye bye.